Good morning, and a very early morning it is too. Uh, welcome back to the channel. This is video number three, I think now. We've had the red kites, we've had the sparrowhawk. Oh no, video number four, because we've had the mountain hare. So this is video number four, and we are today off to um, a hide, hopefully to photograph some goshawks. Um, it's Chris Reed's hide who I uh, follow on Instagram and I've been in contact with him, tried to get him last time we were up in Aviemore and, and it, it got people in the hide the whole week we were there. So I got in early this time and uh, said, we've got a day today in the hide, really looking forward to it. Um, he put some fantastic photographs on. If I can get anywhere near some of his photographs, I'll be happy. Um, so come along for the journey and see what I see. So we're here in the hide. Um, obviously you can't see me, it's so dark um, here, but we're all set up now. Chris is just, uh, you know, he's absolutely fantastic gentleman. He's just set up everything up, set up the perch. He's got everything how it should be, giving me the rundown um, and, and we're all ready to go. I've got um, a two gimbal set up here. Um, the gimbals are all provided by Chris on plates on, on the thing. So I've got my 500 mil prime, which is the, the primary thing that I'm going to be using today. My, my camera's attached to that at the moment. Um, but what Chris said is if they're um, flapping or, you know, um, displaying on the perches, there's a chance I might clip the wings. So what I've done is I've set my 70 to 200, 70 to 200 up at the side on a separate gimbal. I've locked that gimbal all in place and already pre-focused it, got everything ready on the on the, uh, the the perch so that if the gossart was to turn up, I could very quietly switch cameras. I mean, in an ideal world, I'd have two Z9s, um, but I think that might cause a divorce. Um, so we'll, we'll go with switching the cameras over. So fingers crossed, just a waiting game now. We'll wait and see what arrives. So, it's a waiting game in hides. We know it's a waiting game. Uh, and I expect it to be a waiting game. What I didn't expect for us to have been in the hide for probably an hour and no more, <coughs> and the female goshawk arrive. Oh my word, I'm shaking. It was an incredible experience. I could hear her calling, um, and I knew she was around because I could hear her calling, but no sign of her, and then she just appeared on the perch um, now that it, it Chris puts out a pigeon and he clamps it down onto the perch using uh, two wing nuts on a, on a clamp and he clamped it in really tight within two minutes she'd ripped it off the perch and flew off into the woods with it thankfully I got some video and a few photographs the photographs are quite high ISO because we're still early morning and there isn't that much light around but I'll pop it up on the screen now for you to enjoy So we've just had the second goshawk. This time I think the male will come in. Um, I really tightened the clamps up on the pigeon that was on the post. Um, 
and it stayed with us for 35 minutes 35 amazing minutes of a goshawk a wild goshawk just shredding a pigeon I mean he ripped it to pieces um, he mantled around it, around it at times he, he, he did various different displays wings out oh I'm just in awe absolute awe of it it was such an incredible experience something that will live with me forever so that's two goshawks in under two hours what an incredible place this is I've just been uh, speaking to Chris via WhatsApp and he said with the luck we're having you never know we might even get a daytime pine martin visit or even a unicorn who knows <laughs> so stick with us let's see what we get So hopefully I've got a few more photographs uh, and a little bit more video of the Gosshawk for you to see, which I'll pop up onto the screen now for you. So I just taught you very quickly through the settings. So obviously we've got the Z9 on the 500 mil, on the 500 mil prime. So I used that for um, probably about half of the images. Um, and then what I was doing, we're in a clearing in the woods, so there isn't a huge amount of light. So I was experimenting all the time because this goshawk stayed for some time. At times I had the shutter speed up to a thousandth of a second, um, aperture wide open, hoping that that would freeze the wings as it was flapping around. Then when it settled and it was concentrating on feeding on the goshawk, I brought the shutter speed right down, at times down to a fiftieth of a second, um, and then I would increase the aperture um, to probably maximum of about f8 to ensure that I'd got the tail through to the wing tips all, all as, as much in focus as possible um, but by reducing the shutter speed allowing more light and it was uh, able to to bring my ISO right down so I was trying to keep the ISO as low as possible um, and then also at times what I was doing I'll just show you there I've got the 70 to 200 here all set up on a gimbal head um, pre-positioned and focused on the perch and then I've tightened all the clamps up so that once it was settled and feeding I could just switch the body between the two lenses and that allowed me to get the best of both worlds so some really tight um, portrait shots on the 500 and then a little bit more space around it with the 70 to 200 I never dropped that below 200 millimeters but that meant that I'd got lots of space around it for when it was flapping and then eventually when it did fly off with the pigeon um, and it meant that I've got some, some quite good action shots 
and being able to flip between the two was re was really really good um i would say again when you're in these hides optimal the absolute optimal distance is probably between 300 and 400 mil 500 at times a bit too tight 200 at times a bit too far away 300 to 400 is going to be your optimum but i don't care i've got some fantastic images i'm over the moon with it So I'll just take you through the setup really and what Chris has got here. Um, so behind me here you can see the hide um, and he's got this really good Nighthawk netting on it. You can't see through that at all. And you can see my camera lens poking out here through one of the holes that he's made in it. Um, and then he's got various feeders. I'll turn the camera around. He's got various different feeders for the small birds um, he's got a log pile here now it's not for small birds and things like that so that the perches aren't really designed for that but what's interesting is that he does put out eggs um, and and they go for the pine martin so he does get pine martin visit here regularly um, and then towards the back what we've got is the two posts one there and one there and you can tell by just the sheer quantity of feathers below um, that post there is well used by these goshawks. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, distance wise, it's absolutely perfect for, probably as I said before, 300 to 400. I've got a 500 on there um, on a full frame body. And it, it, when the bird flapped and the wings came out, you were clipping the wings, which is why I then switched to the 70 to 200, which I had poking out through one of the other holes um, and it, it means that you can just really concentrate on getting the shot um, switching between the two so <clears throat> after a long wait from the first two visits of the goshawk we finally got a visit from the sparrowhawk female sparrowhawk came in she was very nervous um, I've got some video which I'll pop up onto the screen now for you to see As you can see she's constantly looking around and I'm not surprised after being on the, at the pigeon carcass for probably 30 minutes she let out a shriek as a the goshawk returned to the carcass and she fled off into the woods it was unbelievable the goshawk completely took control of the area she you could tell she was cross that the sparrowhawk had been on her kill and, uh, she, and you know she was unhappy about it um, the goshawk has then just spent 50 minutes stripping that pigeon clean um, absolutely incredible I mean we, we're pretty much not far off it getting dark now as you can tell I've lost the light in the hide again and so we're probably not going to put another anything else out for them and, and we're probably going to call it a day but wow what a way to finish a hide session that was truly truly memorable absolutely astonishing so for this image i photoshopped two images together one of the sparrowhawk and one of the goshawk on the same perch on the same scale just to show the sheer size of the goshawk i hope you enjoyed that every bit as much as i enjoyed videoing it and, and taking the photographs what an amazing predator the only the only um, bird of prey that actually will 
um, predate on other birds of prey, on other raptors. Hence the reason that that sparrowhawk looks so nervous and so worried <laughs> as it was on, on the on on the goshawk pigeon um, stealing a, a, a quick meal. Um, I'm going to bring the video to an end there. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like. Um, if you haven't subscribed, 70% of viewers haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, if you want to drop me a comment, I respond to all the comments, so pop a comment in the bo bottom and I'll, I'll give you a give you a response to that. Um, a big shout out to Chris Reed. Absolutely fantastic setup he's got here. Um, I'll put his, his details and his links in, in the description below. And until next time, ta -ra.